Good evening. It is rare that we have an opportunity to witness and listen to an American legend. Allen Ginsberg entered our national literature with Howell in 1956, and the echoes have never stopped. In the nearly quarter of a century since then, we have watched his growth as a poet from the angst of the beat generation to the serenity of the Buddhist. He was born in Dr. William's immortal Patterson in 1926, the son of Naomi Ginsberg, a Russian emigre, and Louis Ginsberg, a fine lyric poet who enjoyed fame with his famous son in the final years of his life. The recent poems of Allen Ginsberg reflect his harmonious view of the universe. The echoes of Howell are now becoming the Shanti of the Upanishads. Mind Breaths, his new book of poems, songs, and chants was assembled at the Jack Kerouac School of Disembodied Poetics, Naropa Institute, Boulder, Colorado. There, Black Mountain poets and San Francisco poets visit and teach regularly. Another recent book is entitled Mostly Sitting Haiku and was published in Patterson. A member of the American Academy of Arts and Letters, last month he received the gold medal for distinction in literature from the National Arts Club. Accompanying Allen Ginsberg this evening is a poet musician from Denville, Stephen Taylor, who will be playing guitar. It, it gives me great pleasure to welcome one of our national literary treasures to the County College of Morris, Allen Ginsberg. A little more. Uh, we got it now. Uh, we'll begin, uh, Stephen Taylor and I, with uh, homage to two poets who've influenced me, one William Blake, so uh, I'll sing uh, music that uh, we set for a poem called Spring from Songs of Innocence and of Experience. Blake sang his songs and scholar professors of his day failed to notate the tunes, 18th century. So just made it up uh, uh, according to the syllables and the tones of the syllables. And then I'll go on to a poem that's in local anthologies, uh, Supermarket in California, dealing with Walt Whitman, and later a short poem about Rutherford's William Carlos Williams, who was my poetry teacher. Spring, William Blake. Sound the flute. Now it's mute, birds delight, day and night, nightingale in the dale, lark in sky, merrily, merrily.
staring up in the back. No, is this on? No, it's not on anymore. But it's still not on. Oh, ma, home. Oh. Was it on when we were singing? Okay, well, is it straight now, do you think? Yeah. Uh, was it on while we were singing? Yeah. Could you hear in the back anyway? Okay. Y raise your hand if you could not. Okay. A supermarket in California. So what I'll do is start with early poems. Uh, read, um, uh, this is 56, 55 Berkeley. A supermarket in California. What thoughts I have of you tonight, Walt Whitman, for I walked down the side streets under the trees with a headache, self-conscious, looking at the full moon. In my hungry fatigue and shopping for images, I went into the neon fruit supermarket, dreaming of your enumerations. What peaches and what penumbras, whole families shopping at night, aisles full of husbands, wives in the avocados, babies in the tomatoes, and you, Garcia Lorca, what were you doing down by the watermelons? I saw you, Walt Whitman, childless, lonely old grubber, poking among the meats in the refrigerator and eyeing the grocery boys. I heard you asking questions of each. Who killed the pork chops? What price bananas? What kind of poisons are in the jams? Monosodium glutamate in the margarine? Are you my angel? I wandered in and out of the brilliant stacks of cans, following you, and followed in my imagination by the store detective. We strode down the open corridors together in our solitary fancy, tasting artichokes, passing every frozen delicacy and possessing them, but never passing the cashier. <laughs> Where are we going, Walt Whitman? The doors close in an hour. Which way does your beard point tonight? I touch your book and dream of our odyssey in the supermarket, feel observed. Will we walk all night through solitary streets? The trees add shade to shade. Lights out in the houses will both be lonely. Will we stroll dreaming of a lost America of love past blue automobiles and driveways, home to our silent cottage with a TV antenna sticking up into the night under the stars? Ah, dear father, gray beard, lonely old courage teacher, what America did you have? when Sharon quit holding his ferry and you got out on a smoking bank and stood watching the boat disappear on the black waters of Lethe? <laughs> Ten years later, 63, to William Carlos Williams, on hearing of his death, a poem called Death News, I was in India, and a uh, student showed me a copy of Time magazine which said that uh, Williams had died. And I remembered a visit uh, that I had made with Jack Kerouac and Peter Orlowski and Gregory Corso to Nine Ridge Road, Rutherford, where Williams had his physician's practice, baby doctor, and he'd received us. Uh, he knew my poetry, he knew how Owen had written a preface for it, and for an earlier book that had written in Patterson in 51, six years before. And he liked Gregory Corso's poetry, and he loved Kerouac. And his mother, his wife, who was there, took Kerouac in the kitchen and uh, uh, sipped a lot of wine and talked about the time when Florence Williams and her husband had been young in Vienna with beer gardens and medical students. Uh, so this is a, an account of that time. Uh, we all sat in the sofa in the living room and inquired wise words from him. And Williams had had a stroke and was stricken by then. But he looked at us young kids and pointed out through the window, through the curtains, onto Main Street and said, there's a lot of bastards out there. <laughs> Walking at night on Asphalt Campus Road by the German instructor with glasses, William Carlos Williams is dead, he said, in accent, under the trees in Benares. I stopped and asked, Williams is dead? Enthusiastic and wide-eyed under the Big Dipper, stood on the porch of the International House Annex bungalow, insect buzzing around the electric light, reading the medical obituary in time. Out among the sparrows behind the shutters. Williams is in the Big Dipper. He isn't dead as the many pages of words arranged 
thrill with his intonations, the mouths of meek kids becoming subtle, even in Bengal. Thus, there's a life moving out of his pages. Blake, also alive through his songs, experienced machines. Were Williams' last words anything black out there in the carpeted bedroom of the gabled wood house in Rutherford? I wonder what he said, or was there anything else left in realms of speech after his stroke and brain thrill doom entered his thoughts? If I pray to his soul in the bardo thodol, he may hear the unexpected vibration of foreign mercy. Quietly, unknown for three weeks, his death. Now I saw Passaic River and Ganges, one, consenting his devotion, because he walked on the steely bank of the Passaic and prayed to a goddess in the river that he only invented another mother Ganges, riding on the old rusty Holland submarine of the ground floor of the Patterson Museum instead of a celestial Indian crocodile. Mourn, O ye angels of the left wing, that the poet of the streets is a skeleton under the pavement now, and there's no other old soul so kind and meek and feminine joy, and him I can see you what you wanted of me among the bastards out there. I went uh, with Mr. and Mrs. Taylor and Stephen uh, to uh, pass by the Greystone State Park on the way here, because uh, I had visited often in the 30s when my mother was a patient at the uh, Greystone Mental Hospital. And my recollections of that are flashes uh, from uh, when I was 10, 12, uh, 13 years old. So I thought it would be interesting, since I'm reading old and new poetry, as I'll be reading uh, work from the 60s, having begun in the 50s and up to this last year, to read portions of Kaddish, which is a long poem, a funeral ode. Kaddish is the Hebrew word for a mass for the dead. Kaddish for Naomi Ginsberg, my mother, 1894-1956, written in New York City. So I'll read portions from that. For those of you who are younger and who haven't read it, this is a particularly uh, curious poem because it's an outburst of emotion, recollection. Uh, my mother having been mad and I having rejected her uh, or left her in the hospital and had to uh, last visit, she didn't recognize me. So that uh, uh, several years after her death, I began recollecting what actual love existed. Uh, the poem is interesting because it uh, it turned on Bob Dylan to poetry, for those of you who are not familiar with my poetry or this particular text. Uh, this, so he included uh, reading a part of this in his long movie, Rinaldo and Clara, of the last few years. I think what he liked was just the fresh, direct American speech rhythms. Kaddish for Naomi Ginsberg, 1894-1956. Strange now to think of you, gone without corsets and eyes, while I walk on the sunny pavement of Greenwich Village, downtown Manhattan, clear winter noon, and I've been up all night, talking, talking, reading the Kaddish aloud, listening to Ray Charles' blues shout blind on the phonograph, the rhythm, the rhythm, and your memory in my head three years after, and read Shelley's Adonais' last triumphant stanzas aloud, wept, realizing how we suffer, and how death is that remedy all singers dream of, sing, remember, prophesy, as in this Hebrew anthem, or the Buddhist book of answers, and my own imagination of a withered leaf at dawn, dreaming back through life, your time, and mine accelerating toward apocalypse, the final moment, the flower burning in the day, and what comes after, looking back on the mind itself, that saw an American city a flash away, and the great dream of me, or China, or you in a phantom Russia where you came from, or a crumpled bed that never existed, like a poem in the dark, escaped back to oblivion. No more to say, and nothing to weep for but the beings in the dream, trapped in its disappearance, sighing, screaming with it, buying and selling pieces of phantom, worshipping each other, worshipping a god included in it all, longing or inevitability, while at last a vision. Anything more? 
It leaps about me as I go out and walk the street, look back over my shoulder, 7th Avenue, Manhattan, the battlements of window office buildings shouldering each other, high under a cloud, tall as the sky, an instant, and the sky above, an old blue place. Or down the avenue to the south, to, as I walk toward the lower east side, where you walked 50 years ago, little girl, from Russia, eating the first poisonous tomatoes of America, frightened on the dock, then struggling in the crowds of Orchard Street toward what? Toward Newark, toward candy store, first homemade sodas of the century, hand-churned ice cream in the back room on musty brown floor boards, toward education, marriage, nervous breakdown, operation, teaching school and wood buying, and learning to be mad in a dream. What is this life? toward the key in the window, and the great key lays its head of light on top of Manhattan and over the floor and lays down on the sidewalk in a single vast beam moving as I walk down first toward the Yiddish theater and the place of poverty you knew, and I know, but without caring now. Strange to have moved through Patterson and the West and Europe and here again with the cries of Spaniards now on the door stoops, doors and dark boys on the street fire escapes old as you. No, you're not old now. That's left here with me. Myself, anyhow. Maybe old as the universe. And I guess that dies with us. Enough to cancel all that comes. What came is gone forever, every time. That's good. That leaves it open for no regret, no fear, radiators, lack love, torture, even toothache in the end. Though while it comes, it's like a lion that eats the soul, and the lamb, the soul, in us, alas, offering itself in sacrifice to changes, fierce hunger, hair and teeth, and the roar of bone pain, skull bear, break rib, rot skin, brain trick implacability. Ay, ay, we do worse. We are in a fix, and you're out. Death let you out. Death had the mercy. You're done with your century. Done with God. Done with the path through it. Done with yourself at last. Pure. Back to the babe. Dark before your father. Before us all. Before the world. There. Rest. No more suffering for you. I know where you've gone. It's good. No more flowers in the summer fields of New York. No joy now. No more fear of Louis. No more of his sweetness and glasses, his high school decades, debts, loves, frightened telephone calls, conception beds, relatives, hands. No more of your sister, Eleanor. she gone before you. We kept it secret. You killed her, or she killed herself, to bear with you an arthritic heart. But death's killed you both, no matter nor your memory of your mother, 1915 tears in silent movies, weeks and weeks, forgetting, agree, watching Marie Dressler address humanity, Chaplin dancing youth, or Boris Goodenough, Chalyapin's at the Metropolitan Opera, hauling his voice of weeping czar by standing room with Eleanor and Max, watching also the capitalists take seats in the orchestra, white furs, diamonds, with the Young People's Socialist League hitchhiking through New Jersey to Pennsylvania in black baggy gym skirts pants. Photograph of four girls holding each other around the waist and laughing eye too coy. Virginal solitude of 1920. All girls grown old or dead now and that long hair in the grave. Lucky to have had husbands later. You made it. I came too. Eugene, my brother, before still grieving now onto his last stiff hand as he goes later through his cancer or kill. Soon, he will think. And it's the last moment I remember when I see them all through myself now, though not you. I didn't foresee what you felt. What more hideous gape of bad mouth came first to you? And were you prepared to go where? In that dark, that, in that God, a radiance? A lord in the void, like an eye in the black cloud in a dream. Adonai, at last, with you, beyond my remembrance, incapable to guess. Not merely the yellow skull in the grave, 
or a box of worm dust and a stained ribbon? Death's head with a halo, can you believe it? Is it only the sun that shines once for the mind? Only the flash of existence, then none ever was. Nothing beyond what we have, what you had. That's so pitiful, yet triumph to have been here and changed like a tree, broken or flower, fed to the ground, but mad with its petals, colored, thinking great universe, shaken, cut in the head, leaf strip, hid in an egg crate hospital, cloth wrapped, sore, freaked in the moon brain, knotless, no flower like that flower which knew itself in the garden and fought the knife, lost, cut down by an idiot snowman's icy. Even in the spring, some strange ghost thought, some death, sharp icicle in his hand, crowned with old roses, a dog for his eyes, cock of a sweatshop, heart of electric irons, all the accumulations of life that wear us out, clocks, bodies, consciousness, trucks, shoes, breasts, steering wheels, begotten sons, your communism, Paranoia into hospitals. You once kicked Eleanor in the leg. She died of heart failure later. You a stroke. Asleep within a year. The two of you. Sisters in death. Is Eleanor happy? Max, her husband, grieves alive in an office on lower Broadway. Lone, large mustache over midnight. Accountings. Not sure. His life passes. As he sees. What does he doubt now? Still dream of making money? Or they might have made money? Hired a nurse? Had children, found even your immortality, Naomi. I'll see him soon. Now I've got to cut through, to talk to you, as I didn't when you had a mouth. Forever, and we're bound for that. Forever, like Emily Dickinson's horses, headed to the end. They know the way these steeds run faster than we think. It's our own life they cross and take with them. Magnificent, mourned no more, marred of heart, Mind behind, married, dreamed, mortal, changed, ass and face, done with the murder. In the world, given, flower maddened, made no utopia, shut under pine, owned in earth, bound in lone, Jehovah, except, nameless, one-faced, forever beyond me, beginningless, endless, father in death, Though I am not here for this prophecy, I am unmarried, I'm himless, I'm heavenless, headless in blisshood, I would still adore thee, heaven after death, only one blessed in nothingness, not light or darkness, dayless eternity, take this, this psalm from me, burst from my hand in a day, some of my time, now given to nothing to praise thee, but death. This is the end, the redemption from wilderness, way for the wanderer, house sought for all, black handkerchief washed, clean by weeping, page beyond psalm, last change of mine and Naomi to God's perfect darkness, death, stay thy phantoms. Twelve years old, riding the bus at night through New Jersey, have left Naomi to Parkai, the fates in a haunted house in Lakewood, New Jersey, left to my own fate, bus, sunk in a seat, all violence broken, my heart sore in my ribs, mind was empty, would she were safe in her coffin, or back at normal school in Newark, studying up on America in a black skirt, winter on the street, without lunch, a penny a pickle, home at night to take care of Eleanor in the bedroom. First nervous breakdown was 1919. She stayed home from school and lay in a dark room for three weeks. Something bad, never said what. Every noise hurt. Dreams of the creeks of Wall Street. Before the Great Depression, went upstate to New York, recovered. My father took a photo of her sitting cross-legged on the grass, her long hair wound with flowers, smiling, playing lullabies on mandolin, poison ivy smoke in left-wing summer camps. And me in infancy saw trees, or back teaching school, laughing with idiots, the backward classes, a Russian specialty, morons with dreamy lips, great eyes, thin feet and sticky fingers, sway-backed, rachitic, great heads pendulous over Alice in Wonderland, 
a blackboard full of C-A-T. Naomi reading, patiently, story out of a communist fairy tale book. The tale of the sudden sweetness of the dictator, the forgiveness of warlocks, armies, kissing, death's heads around the green table, the king and the workers. Patterson Press printed them up in the 30s till she went mad or they folded both. Oh, Patterson, I got home late that night. Louis was worried. How could I be so... Didn't I think I shouldn't have left her there alone, mad in Lakewood, called the doctor, phoned the home in the pines. Too late. Went to bed exhausted, wanting to leave the world. Probably that year, newly in love with Paul, my high school mind hero, a Jewish boy who became a doctor later, then a silent, neat kid. I later, laying down life for him, moved to Manhattan, followed him to Columbia College. I prayed on the ferry to help mankind if I was admitted to Columbia. I vowed the day I journeyed to the entrance exam by being an honest revolutionary labor leader. I trained for that, inspired by Sacco Vanzetti, Norman Thomas with eggs thrown at him in Military Park in Newark, Eugene Debs going to jail in World War I and my brother named after him, John J. Altgel, the hero that has departed from Chicago, Carl Sandburg with his Dust Bowl ballads, Edgar Allan Poe and his Raven, Little Blue Books published them out in Girard, Kansas. I wanted to be president or senator. Ignorant woe. Later, dreams of kneeling by Paul's shocked knees, declaring my love of 1941. What sweetness he'd have shown me, though I'd wished him in despair. First love, a crush. Later, a mortal avalanche. Whole mountains of homosexuality. Matterhorns of cock. Grand canyons of asshole. Weight on my melancholy head. Meanwhile, I walked on Broadway Patterson, imagining infinity like a rubber ball without space beyond. What's outside? Coming home to Graham Avenue, still melancholy, passing the lone green hedges across the street, dreaming 10 o'clock at night after the movies. The telephone rang at 2 a.m. Emergency! She'd gone mad. Naomi hiding in bed in the rest home in Lakewood, screaming about bugs of Mussolini. Help! Louis! Grandma! Fascists! Death! The landlady frightened, an old fag attendant screaming back at her. Terror that woke the neighbors, old ladies on the floor recovering from menopause. All those rags between thighs, clean sheets, sorry over lost babies, husbands ashen, children sneering at Yale or putting oil in their hair at CCNY or trembling in Montclair State Teachers College like my brother Eugene. Her big leg crouched to her breast, hand outstretched, keep away, wool dress on her thighs. Her coat dragged under the bed. She barricaded herself under the bed spring with suitcases. Louis, in pajamas, listening to the phone, frightened. Do now? Who could know? My fault, delivering her to solitude, sitting in the dark room on the sofa, trembling, trying to figure it out. He took the morning train to Lakewood. Naomi still under the bed. Thought he brought poison cops. Naomi screaming. Louis, what happened to your heart then? Have you been killed by Naomi's ecstasy? Dragged her out. Around the corner, a cab forced her in with her valise, but the driver left him off at the drugstore. Bus stop. Two hours wait. I lay in bed nervous in the four-room apartment on Broadway Patterson, the big bed in the living room next to Louis's desk, shaking. He came home late at night, told me what happened. Naomi at the prescription counter defending herself from the enemy. Racks of children's books, douchebags, aspirins, pots, blood. Don't come near me. Murderers, keep away. Promise not to kill me. Louis in horror at the soda fountain with Lakewood Girl Scouts, coke addicts, nurses, busmen hung on schedule, police from the country precinct, dumb, and a priest dreaming of pigs jumping off an ancient cliff, smelling the air, Louis pointing to emptiness, customers vomiting their cokes or staring, Louis humiliated, Naomi triumphant, the announcement of the plot, bus arrives, the drivers won't have them on the trip to New York. Phone call to Dr. Watts's. She needs a rest. The mental hospital. State Greystone doctors. Bring her here, Mr. Ginsburg. Naomi. Naomi. Sweating. Bulge-eyed. Fat. The dress unbuttoned at one side. Hair over brow. Her stocking hanging evilly on her legs. Screaming for a blood transfusion. One righteous hand upraised. A shoe in it. Barefoot in the pharmacy. The enemy's approach. What poisons? Tape recorders. FBI. Zhdanov. Hiding behind the counter. 
Trotsky rich, mixing rat bacteria in the back of the store. Uncle Sam in Newark plotting deathly perfumes in the Negro district. Uncle Ephraim drunk with murder in a policeman's bar. Scream, scheming of Mayor Haig and the Mafia. Aunt Rose passing water through needles of the Spanish Civil War. Till the hired $35 ambulance came from Red Bank. Grabbed her arms, strapped her on the stretcher, moaning, poisoned by imaginaries vomiting chemicals through Jersey, begging mercy from Essex County to Morristown, and back to Greystone, where she lay three years. That was the last breakthrough, delivered her to the madhouse again. On what wards? I walked there later, oft. Old catatonic ladies, gray as cloud or ash or walls, sit crooning over floor space, chairs, and the wrinkled hags a creep, accusing, begging my 13-year-old mercy. Take me home! I went alone sometimes, looking for the lost Naomi, taking shock. And I'd say, no, you're crazy, Mama. Trust the doctors. And a uh, further section. <laughs> no, I saw. Uh, I wanted to finish. It's all right. I wanted to finish several sections of this. Uh, several years later. Your last night in the... Two years after a trip to Mexico, bleak in the flat plain near Brentwood, scrub brush and grass around the unused railroad track to the crazy house. New brick 20-story central building, now lost on the vast lawns of Madtown and Long Island. Huge cities of the moon. Asylum spreads out giant wings above a path to the minute black hole, the door, entrance to the building through its crotch. I went in, smelt funny, the halls again, up elevator to a glass door on a woman's ward, to Naomi. Two nurses, booksome white, they let her out. Naomi stared, and I gasped. She'd had a stroke, too thin, shrunk on her bones. Age come to her, now broken into white hair. Loose dress on her skeleton, face sunk, old, withered, cheek of crone, one hand stiff, heaviness of her forties and menopause reduced by one heart stroke, lame now, wrinkles, a scar on her head, the lobotomy, ruin, the hand dipping downwards to death. Oh, Russian-faced woman on the grass, your long black hair is crowned with flowers. The mandolin is on your knees. Communist beauty, sit here married in the summer among daisies, promised happiness at hand. Holy mother, now you smile on your love, your world is born anew. Children run naked in the field, spotted with dandelions. They eat in the plum tree grove at the end of the meadow and find a cabin where a white-haired negro teaches the mystery of his rain barrel. Blessed daughter, come to America. I long to hear your voice again, remembering your mother's music in the song of the natural front. O oh, glorious muse that bore me from the womb, gave suck first mystic life and talk me, talk and music, from whose pained head I first took vision, tortured and beaten in the skull. What mad hallucinations of the damned that drive me out of my own skull to seek eternity till I find peace for thee, O oh, poetry, and for all humankind call on the origin, death, which is the mother of the universe. Now wear your nakedness forever, white flowers in your hair, your marriage sealed behind the sky. No revolution might destroy that maidenhood, O oh, beautiful garbo of my karma, all photographs from 1920 encamped Nikadigit here unchanged, with all the teachers from Newark. Nor Eleanor be gone, nor Max await his specter, nor Louis retire from this high school. Oh, mother, what have I left out? Oh, mother, what have I forgotten? Oh, mother, farewell with a long black shoe. Farewell with Communist Party in a broken stocking. Farewell with six dark hairs on the wind of your breast. Farewell with your old dress and a long black beard around the vagina. Farewell with your sagging belly, with your fear of Hitler, with your mouth of bad short stories. 
with your fingers of rotten mandolins, with your arms of fat Patterson porches, with your belly of strikes and smokestacks, with your chin of Trotsky in the Spanish Civil War, with your voice singing for the decaying over broken workers, with your nose of bad lay, with your nose of the smell of the pickles of Newark, with your eyes, with your eyes of Russia, with your eyes of no money, with your eyes of false China, with your eyes of Aunt Eleanor in the Bronx, with your eyes of starving India, with your eyes pissing in the park, with your eyes of America taking a fall, with your eyes of your failure at the piano, with your eyes of your relatives in the pharmacy in California, with your eyes of Ma Rainey dying in an ambulance, with your eyes of Czechoslovakia attacked by robots, with your eyes going to painting class at night in the Bronx, with your eyes of the killer grandma you see on the horizon from the fire escape, with your eyes running naked out of the apartment, screaming into the hall, with your eyes being led away by policemen to an ambulance, with your eyes strapped down on the operating table, with your eyes with pancreas removed, with your eyes of appendix operation, with your eyes of abortion, with your eyes of ovaries removed, with your eyes of shock, with your eyes of lobotomy, with your eyes of divorce, with your eyes of stroke, with your eyes alone, with your eyes, with your eyes, with your death full of flowers. <laughs> Related to that, Related to that, from the last uh, year, uh, a kind of summary of the uh, sentiments, in a way, put in the form of a uh, song called The Rune, like afterthoughts on uh, disillusionment. <laughs> Where the years have gone, where the clouds have flown, where the rainbow shone, we vanish and we make no moan. Where the sun will blind the delighting mind, in a diamond wind we appear. Find icy intellect, fiery beauty wrecked, but love's castled speck of moonbeam, nor is truth correct. Wise bodies leave here with the mind's false cheer, eternity near as. Where we disappear when suffering sounds, when all tongues lie dumb, when bliss is all numb with knowledge of bony white sum, we die neither blessed nor with curse confessed. Wanting Earth's worst, best, but return where all beauty is rest. Ba da da ba 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 da ba da da ba da da ba ba. Bye. Uh -huh.
broken bone blues. Uh, I'm a, practice, a Buddhist practitioner, that is a sitting meditation in, uh, in the lineage of teaching. There is an old teacher called Telopa who told his student Naropa, Naropa, you're a clay pitcher of a body. Believing in an eye deserves to be broken. Broken bone, 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 all over the ground. Broken bone, 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 everywhere the sound of broken bone, bone, bone. Everyone brought down, everyone brought down to broken bone, 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 bony head and broken crown, broken bone, 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 broken guru king and clown, broken bone, 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 to the boneyard I am bound, to the boneyard I am bound, broken heart broken toe, broken soul, broken nose, broken heaven, broken woe, broken body into broken earth must go, into broken earth must go. When my bones all break, I must feel my way to death. When all my bones break, when my meat starts to scrape, through death I will escape. To heaven through my heart, to heaven through my heart's breath. Broke my leg under my knee, broke my heart, broke my greed. Broke my body like a dog, like a scared dog indeed. Broke my dumb body so God could see me, so God could see me. He broke my body. Broken bones, oh Lord, I'll give my house away. Broken bones, oh God, it was never mine anyway. Broken bones, oh Buddha, take my skull today, or take back my skull someday. Break, 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 oh bones everywhere. Break, break, break. Soul in the black air. Break, break, break. My body, God take care. My body, God take good care. Take your time, oh Lord. Break my bones ten times ten. Take your time, oh death. And you can tell me when. Farewell, swift body dream. God bless me again. Come down, God, and bless me again. And I'll come back and bless you again. Come down, God, and bless me again. And I'll come back and bless you again. Come down, God, and bless me again. And I'll come back and bless you again. And to cover one territory we haven't mentioned yet, Dope Fiend Blues. Dope Fiend Blues, <clears throat> dedicated to all the meditating high Buddhists of New Jersey. Yes, I'm a dope fiend. I don't believe your laws. Hey, Mr. Policeman, I'm a dope fiend. Take the joint out of your jaws. I'm a dope fiend and I'm getting out of jail because, 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 because I'm a dope fiend. Sitting in my bedroom high I don't even light up no muggles I don't know why 
are just naturally a dope fiend under the empty sky. Yes, I'm a dope fiend. I don't sniff cocaine. I hear the walls ringing. My nose is still in pain. It's snowing all around New York City. Give me a two-penny plane. Yes, I'm a dope fiend. Should have seen me used to mainline. Yeah. Should have seen me shoot that white heroin. I used to get the chills, but it never burned down my mind. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Lord, dope fiend. I dropped LSD. I seen Manhattan's towers stick up in eternity. Ten years ago, you should have took the elevator up with me. Holy Mary, yeah. I'm a dope fiend, nigger loving, call me faggot queen. Yeah. I'm a fiend, they give me long hair, but I swear I've never been. But if your mother see my picture in the paper, she say I look clean. Hey, I'm a dope fiend, I'm a dope fiend. I breathe sweet, clean air. I don't shoot speed in my arm, never more. I'm a dope fiend everywhere. I'm a dope fiend in the FBI eyes and they wouldn't dare, dare, dare to bust me for a dope fiend. I don't carry any shit around. I'm just a dope fiend by nature. I like to sit on the ground. All naked with my clothes on, making a man drink sound. Whoa! I'm a dope fiend. I'm a dope fiend. Gonna bust this nation's mind. Gonna put LSD in your prayers And laughing gas in the wind Ether and peyote gonna drive Mount Rainier blind And Manhattan I'm a dope fiend A Roman soul in friendly grass Dope fiend, dope fiend I carry nothing but dharma up my ass Yeah, oh, you dope fiends hear me Out there in the middle class Rich dope fiend, when you gonna change the laws? Hey, poor dope fiend, join the border party because they're gonna legalize existence. Everybody ride a big white horse. mugging up to New York City in the uh, late 70s uh, or, mi or mid 70s the um, difficult condition of living in a world so over militarized and imaged with destruction and macho aggression and uh, stupefaction through petrochemicals and nuclear greed and uh, harshness, r r rationalistic uh, aggression uh, worldwide and on so uh, nasty a level <laughs> uh, that it, uh, from the president's office down to the streets, the violence and uh, inhumanity are um, comical. Tonight, I walked out of my red apartment door on East 10th Street's dusk, lower Manhattan, walked out of my home ten years, walked out in my honking neighborhood. Tonight, at seven, walked out past garbage cans chained to concrete anchors, walked under black painted fire escapes, giant cast iron plate covering a hole in the ground, crossed the street, traffic light red, 13 bus roaring by the liquor store, past the corner pharmacy iron grated, past Coca-Cola and Milai posters fading, scraped on brick, past the Chinese laundry wood-doored and broken cement stoop steps for rent, hall painted green and purple, Puerto Rican style, along East 10th Street's glass-spattered pavement, kid blacks and Spanish oiled hair adolescents crowded the house fronts, 
Ah, tonight I walked out on my block, New York City, under humid summer sky, Halloween, thinking, what happened to Timothy Leary joining the brain police for a season? Thinking, what's all this weathermen? Secrecy and self-righteousness beyond reason. Must be a lot of FBI infiltrators in there. All that black separatism, black nationalism, that must have been the party line of the Newark FBI. Walked past a taxi cab controlling the bottle-strewn curb, past young fellows with their umbrella handles and canes leaning against a ravaged Buick. And I stepped, looking at the crowd of kids on a stoop. A boy stepped up, put his arm around my neck. Tenderly, I thought for a moment, squeezed harder his umbrella handle against my skull. And his friends took my arm. A young brown companion tripped his foot against my ankle as I went down shouting, Om ah hum, to gangs of lovers in the stoop watching, slowly appreciating why well, this is a raid. These strangers mean strange young business with what, my pockets, bald head, broken heeled bone leg, my soft shoes, my heart. Have they knives? Oh, ma, home. Have they sharp metal wood to shove in eye, ear, ass? Oh, ma, home. And slowly reclined on the pavement, struggling to keep my woolen bag of poetry, address, calendar, and leery lawyer notes hung from my shoulder, dragged in my neat Orlon shirt over the crossbar of a broken metal door, dragged slowly into the fire-soiled floor of an abandoned store. Laundry, candy counter, 1929. Now a mess of papers and pillows and cracked plastic covers, cockroach corpse on the ground. My wallet back pocket passed over the iron footstep guard and fell out. Stole my godmuggers, lost fingers. Strange, couldn't tell. Snakeskin wallet, actually plastic. Seventy dollars my bank money for the week. Old broken wallet. Dreary plastic contents. American Express card. Manufacturer's Hanover Trust Credit, too. Business card from Mr. Spears, British Home Minister Drug Squad. My draft card. Membership in the American Civil Liberties Union and Naropa Institute Instructors Identification. Allen Ginsberg, co-director of the Jack Kerouac School of Disembodied Poetics. Oh, my home, I continued chanting. Oh.